Hello everyone, and welcome to Proceeds OPC's YouTube channel. I am Kaisa, and in today's video I will give you an introduction to our simulation server's newly released published and subscribed features, or popsub features as we like to call them. Popsub is currently a hot topic in OPC UA, as it enables entering the new market for cloud systems, for example, as well as makes it possible to create more scalable Internet of Things systems. Okay, let's go. During this video, we'll be using an MQTP broker called Mosquito to act as a local broker for our Popsub network. You can find the download link for that in the description box below. I already have the broker installed and running on the background, so let's move on. Next, start simulation server and let it do its thing. That will take a while. If you are not using the expert mode yet, go to options and switch to expert mode. Now we will go to the pop view where all the configuration happens. This toolbar shows that we are not running the publisher at the moment. You can start running it by clicking this run button. But let's do some configuring first. Publisher ID is generated automatically, so we don't need to change it. Connection address is important because that is what the subscriber needs to use to connect to the broker later. Let's check the configuration of that. From this drop-down selector, we can select the network type that suits our needs best. Let's go with the default MQTP for now. When you are running the broker on your device, you can use localhost. Otherwise, this is where you will write the broker's name. Port number is selected for you by default, as well as the client ID. If you don't specifically want to set those yourself, you can leave them to default. If you wish to restrict access to the Bobsoft network, you can set user authentication for the connection, but that's optional. Click the test connection button to see if the connection is successful. If the broker is not running when testing the connection, the test will fail. Just start up your broker and try again. Now, click OK. MQTT supports encoding messages with JSON or UADP. JSON is the default and more widely used, so let's go with that. Next, we can configure what will be published to the broker. These writer groups are containers for a group of dataset writers that will write the published data messages. Every writer group has its own publishing interval, which defines how often the dataset writers need to gather data and write messages. In addition to the interval, you can also decide which dataset writers are included in this group. This group already contains these two dataset writers, but we can add more by clicking on Add Dataset Writer. You can also remove them by selecting a writer and clicking the minus button. These dataset writers have their own configurations as well. We can select which one of these two datasets is included in the dataset writer from this drop-down selector. Here we have lots of settings, which you can use to optimize the communication, but for now we can leave them to defaults. Here we can define the queue name. In MQTT language, this queue is called a topic for future reference. You can think of the queue as a path to the data that this specific writer is going to write. This queue name is needed later when making subscriptions. It's totally okay to leave these to default because the server generates the names as recommended in the OPC URA specification. You really can't go wrong with that. Next, we can make changes to the contents of our datasets in the variable datasets view. On the left, we have a list of datasets. And on the right, we have the contents of that dataset. And here we can see the fields that are going to be published. If we are not happy with this list, we can remove useless variables by clicking the Remove button. We can also add variables from Add Variable. In this dialog, we can browse the address space 
and find the variables we are interested in. Let's add this variable to the dataset by dragging it here. You can select multiple nodes and drag them all at once. We don't need two of these, so let's remove the first one. Clicking OK adds the nodes to our fields. Lastly, let's check out the event dataset view. Here on the left, we have a list of event datasets. And on the right, we have event notifier and the event fields that we want to publish. We can select the event notifier from the address space. This dialog lets you select only the nodes that have an event notifier in their attributes. Next, we can add a new field by clicking on Select Fields. Now we can select the information we want to include in the messages. This view lists everything that the event notifier could contain. The newly added field will pop up at the end of this list. As you can see, all these tabs have stars next to their names. They indicate that we have made changes that haven't been saved yet. You can save the changes by clicking on Apply Changes. If you don't want to save anything for some reason, you can click Revert and lose all changes. Now we can finally start the publisher. Just click on this green button and voila, the status changed to running. And we can also see that the publisher is running from the server's status view. Great! We have now successfully configured an OPC UA publisher and started publishing to a broker. The next thing to do is to subscribe to the topics with another application. Stay tuned for the next video where I will show you how to do that using the Process OPC UA browser. Thank you for stopping by to learn about the WebSock features of Simulation Server. Links to the tools used in this video can be found in the description box below. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. Also, be sure to check out our other videos and subscribe to our channel to be notified of all new content. We are always open to feedback, so let us know how we can make learning OPC UA more fun by leaving your comments below.